Yes, yes, this is Mr. Controversy, and this is the infamous Three Point Conversion Station. Keep it locked. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Another Saturday morning, and I am your host, Mr. Controversy. Did you miss me? Can't wait to get into the show today. So much to talk about. NCAA Tournament. Baseball is about to start back. NBA basketball is heating up. AAF. Also, well, I mean, I know a lot of people not getting to AAF, but y'all should. It, it, it's cool. And also, of course, we got um, just rumors and stuff with the NFL, man. So much to talk about. And, of course, I'm not doing this by myself. I got my engineer, the one and only with the smooth, silky voice. That the women be asking me, who is that talking? Who be doing them uh Reports. My man G. What up, G? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't how he talk, y'all. G had it popping this week, too, on his ass. G, I saw you, boy. <laughs> right. And then, <laughs> G, you got that picture, man? You got to put that picture up, bro. <laughs> no. You got to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> he was on Stump the Swab, the Schwab, uh, and he had a picture up. Man, also, of course, as you heard, I got my um, main man, my road dog, partner in crime, D Intellectual. What up, D? Yes, yes. What up, though? It's going to be a beautiful Saturday, man. Yeah, whatever. You just saying that because. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's exactly why. <laughs> Shout out to all the people at Verizon. They ain't working anymore. <laughs> oh, wait. But anyway, um, like I said, it's a great show, man. We uh, have a lot to get into. March Madness. It's, it's starting to turn into madness. You know, it's funny because Thursday was kind of, uh, it was some good games, some great games. But, you know, the people yeah, want to see yeah, upsets. I'm not, yeah. I would just want to see great basketball, which has been some great basketball. But then yesterday we'll get into. Those people are spoiled. Right. I know. Then we, we, <laughs> then we saw the upsets, whatever. We'll get into that in a minute. Also, we're going to um, talk about the. NBA MVP, you know, um, it's some people might think it's a two man race. I say it's a three man race. We might have some other people you can throw in there. So we're gonna get into that, the debate about that. Also, we're talking about man. The NFL came out and they talked about the uh, rule proposals, you know, from teams and the committee. And we have some funny ones, but we picked out a few that we're going to get into and, and I guess talk about if we agree or we don't agree. Some should get stop it, but like I said, <laughs> we'll get into that. And then everybody's talking about Zion. It's the big hype about Zion Williamson, the big freshman, which he is, you know. Is he the greatest freshman ever or whatever? So we're going to talk who is the greatest freshman that we've seen. Not we're not going by stats as far as we're looking it up, just saying the eye test I saw. We'll get into that. And then we have Major League Baseball. Uh can't wait to get it to for the season to start. That starts next is it Thursday? I don't get that, man. I don't I don't like that. Uh, yeah, what happened yeah. to the Monday? I, yeah. I didn't even like the Sunday night joint. I like the it's Sunday technically night. already started. Right, because they started in, J- in Japan. Was it Japan? Japan. See, that's, the Sunday on. night wasn't that bad because it's Sunday night right, baseball. But, but that Thursday Yeah, I don't like weird. the Thursday. But back that's in the day, you, at least everybody's playing on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. But that Monday used to be yeah, you Monday at 12, you know, that right. first game. All these out. games on TV. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. And then we have a special guest. And, of course, our segment, Ask a Doc with Dr. Fowler. He will be calling in. He's on call, probably going to be in the uh, surgery room knowing him. No, Still I calling in. Yeah, you know, uh, I ain't going to lie. I hope he don't get mad. But he called in yesterday. I talked to him yesterday just getting him prepped for the show. And he was like, man, I'm on the way right now to um, 
pop back a, a dislocated shoulder. I'm like, dang. Oh. And this is like 10.30 at night. Oh. So, um, yeah, that's what happens when you want to call. That's why you get that bag photo, too. Right. I know, right? <laughs> um, and then um, we had a special guest. Doc, um, what's, I was going to say doctor. We should call him a doctor because Deshaun. Definitely a doctor. Deshaun's hate college guy. Boy, know that college <laughs> basketball. He's been all over the radio this week. So um, he should be on this time. You know, he had some uh, technical difficulties last week. So, But anyway, make sure you let your family and friends know that we're on live locally at 1100 AM WWWE The Real. Also, you can check us out on Facebook. Facebook Live on the Three Point Conversion Facebook page. Then we're on iHeartRadio, 1100 WWWE, iTunes, not iTunes, but TuneIn Radio. iTunes will be later on after the show as a podcast. TuneIn Radio, Radio Now, and like I said, we're everywhere. So it's time to get to these quick hits. Let's get it. Shout out to Sharon Beats for the sick beats. So as we mentioned earlier, had some upsets yesterday. We had number 13 ranked UC Irvine. They upset number four ranked Kansas State. Then number 12, Oregon surprised number five, Wisconsin. And my favorite, number 12, Liberty got their first win in school history. And UC Irvine got it too, the first win in school history as far as inside the tournament against Mississippi State. When you see all these upsets, usually you see the 12-5. That's what happens. That's been a norm, it seems like. You're going to get a couple. Yeah, definitely. Um, but still, is it great to see this, though? Yeah, I think it's real good. So <laughs> I think one of the biggest things that people, um, that happens and and – things that fail to people fail to realize is like teams that may be 13th they're not 13th based on necessarily their record like some of these 13s are 24 and 5 like they've been winning all year they're winning programs right it's just that the conference they play in you know the, the strength of schedule like the people that they play may not be up to par but if you're a good basketball team you are a good basketball team right. it doesn't really matter who you play against you know no, I, I definitely understand that. And, G, you know, the thing about college basketball that I love the most is the fact that everyone has a chance. Every every time. That's why it's called March Madness. And <laughs> the fact that it doesn't matter who you play. Basketball is that – football to me – if you ain't got the athletes, if you got, you gonna lose nah. more than likely. <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's normally how you see in in basketball. A lot of times, the <clears> best <throat> team is gonna win every time. In football, when well, football, you'll see that the best team is going to win most of the time. But uh, in college basketball, it really an upset can happen at any time. And yeah, the twelve five. I think the. I feel like the committee kind of puts like, hey, this is a trap game for this five seed over here. <laughs> so, every year. Every year. And, uh, I, and that, I think that also happens with like the 10-7. Uh, the, the and 8-9 is always a toss-up. So it's it's it, the teams that are they may be seated lower are getting closer. Right. I mean, we saw a 16 beat a 1 last year. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it could happen. At, at, at like any any team can get beat. Yeah, if you have a bad game, your your top player isn't shooting well or gets in foul trouble. Like that changes everything right. or, or the momentum. You know, you play against a team that's used to running up and down the court, and you let them get in their mold. Right, man, that, that's trouble. <laughs> and shout out to all the um, ladies that've been watching. They they root for the upset. Ups, you know that's what they look. Shout like. out to Akila. What up, Akila? <laughs> Moving on. James Harden ties. His career high scoring 61 points in a win against the San Antonio Spurs. This joker had 27 points in the first quarter. He knew what he was on when he when he when he came to the to the arena. He so can we it. say he's you gotta put him, I know how long he's been in the league, like eight years? Ten years? Wow. Jeez, y'all getting old. He's Man. in the same same draft with Steph Curry. Y'all getting old. Steph Curry been in the league too. Yeah, years? y'all getting old. Y'all getting and Blake old. Griffin. 
<laughs> Man, well, Blake, well, not Blake playing balance. That Blake looked like he'd been in the league for 10 years. No, I'm just playing. Yeah, he just don't dunk, dunk, you know, dunk as much. But he threes now. Can we, so since he's been in the league for 10 years, I can legitimately yeah, yeah, ask yeah, this question. Yeah, ask this. Can we say that now you put him, him in the top tier in NBA history as far as scores? I'd probably put him in top five. <laughs> Yeah, he's one of the he's one of the greatest offensive players, yeah. um, and he he's not pleasing to watch. He really yeah, isn't. He, I, yeah, I, I, I don't like. I, okay, I, so I covered the game. We're gonna hurry it up, but I, I covered the game for the first time. Not for the first time, but I covered them. Them, Houston. Yeah. That was my first time watching them live, and <laughs> it wasn't as like. Man, I thought it was going to be like, oh, this is, you think it like, oh, they just come down, they shoot a bunch of threes. It's threes or dunks, threes or dunks. But it's when Harden not. has the ball, that's why I call him the tax attorney. He's, he's <laughs> bidding all the rules, trying to yeah. get all the fouls. Yeah, yeah so it, it's, it's difficult to watch. Right. It, it wasn't as, you know, and, and if hype they, as I if, thought if, it would be. If they're going to allow him, I guess we got to say he has one of the best offensive moves ever. Yeah. Like. So, one of the best, <laughs> yep. All right, moving on. Lonzo Ball, the Los Angeles Lakers guard, Lonzo Ball, cut ties with co-founder of Big Baller Brand and a family friend, a friend of the families, I should say, Mr. Alan Foster, for belief of using Ball's access to his business and personal finances to enrich himself, I think which is around $1.5 million, and it hasn't been accounted for. So they let him go. Um, Man, that's a shame. Gotta watch what. Friends, gotta watch who you have. Friends and family, man. Friends and family. Like you talk about a lot of times, how you want to put your family on, how you want to put your friends on, but then when it comes back, a lot of times it's friends and family that comes back to bite. And the thing is, he had a a past history, like a criminal. Yeah. yeah, past history. So you can't. You should have known that. But he, you know, even if that's right, that's like if you have a cousin that's, you know, that 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 no. let's say been in the game, been hustling or whatever, right? Because of the history, you're going to be like, you know what? No, nah, nah, I'm going to try to still get because I, I, you don't no, think you're going to do it no, to me. No, no, no. If you got a cousin, if you got a cousin that you know who's still, when he comes to your crib, you putting everything, yeah, all the good stuff yeah, like the away. Crack, it's like the so, crackhead yeah, uncle. So you crackhead can't, uncle right. but, you in that life. <laughs> but I guess in this case, he's considered a co-founder. Right. So, so why would you he put? Might, he had the, the we were talking about the, the Uncle Charles role right. to where, you know, he's in he's in <laughs> Lonzo's ear too. We we know about LeVar being in Lonzo's ear, but this guy was in, had to be in, in Lonzo's ear, ear just as much. Yeah. He might be the one that's been in uh, Uncle's ear, Uncle uh Right, uh, right. he could be one that was causing some problems. Yeah, so moving on. (laughs) Boston Red Sox left-hand pitcher Chris Sale agreed to a five-year, $145 million contract. Wow. A six-year option based on stats worth at least $20 million. And then he has a no-trade clause that starts in the middle of 2020 season. Might as well say he has a no-trade clause. Yeah, so they're giving (laughs) money out like it's nothing. He deserved it though, man. He yeah, he Chris, can pitch. Chris Sellers, Chris Sellers, and he's durable. Like, who thought this little skinny, tall dude would be this durable? He's durable. Yeah. Oh, hey, Boston, they got it, so they're gonna spend it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said, if I have another son, hey, baseball. baseball. I told y'all baseball. real quick. <laughs> we shout out to my son. He, no athleticism at all. I mean, he plays football. Well, he yeah. plays football. You know, you can do that, but he's not. That you know what I'm saying, athletic. He's athletic, athletic like that, inclined. you know, yeah, in a sense. But he, um, we was coming home from the barbershop, and uh, I remember we What's pulled up, we pulled up, Sydney Cuts Barbershop, of course, and we pulled up. And uh, I was about to get out, we left, we got there at six in the morning, we just got back at like eight. I'm tired, and when we pulled up, he said, Dad, you know, I want to play, I want to play baseball. Bro, I backed that car up so quick. Let's go. Went straight to Sports Authority. <laughs> got him got his gloves. two gloves. Yo, let's go. Let's go. And then next yeah. month later, month later, he was like, I don't want to do it. I was sick. <laughs> I almost made him do it, but yeah, I want to do it. That baseball money. What? Man. That baseball money, man. And then, speaking of Boston, the Boston Celtics guard, Kyrie Irving, came out and said and stated, I'm definitely taking some games off before the playoffs. Make no sense. It makes no sense. The emphasis on these regular games when you're gearing up to battle for the playoffs. Do you all agree? Uh, I think he's in, I think the team is in the position to where he can say that. 
because right now they're at the five seed and that's probably where they're going to stay. Mm -hmm. Uh, So why not take a couple of games if it's not going to mean anything to keep playing and your position won't change? So here's the thing, right? (laughs) You don't say that, though. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. We know it happens. But Kyrie, like, how can... So the biggest thing is Kyrie may be going to New York, right? That's one of the biggest things. Can he handle the New York media? I think he can. Boston. This, this recent se- this season says no. He can't. Yeah, he can't. Like, dude, what are you? Like, I, I do think, you know how he would be tore? Like, the, the me- New York media would tear him up saying something like that. Oh, yeah, I, right. Uh, I just want to add, they're the fifth seed now, but they're only a half game back of the four seed. So I guess it don't really, yeah, four or five yeah. home. I mean, away. if you're just expecting Indiana to fall off a little bit more, then or, or just I the fact that you feel like you could beat Indiana in Indiana, like that's probably Cleveland what was it like is. that, and that's yeah. probably that's just, more so what it is. They yeah. figure regardless if we home or right. away, we're gonna beat Indiana. And last but not least, the Washington Capitals goaltender Braden Holtby said he would not join his teammates. And it's hockey now. He would not join his teammates. Next week, going to the White House to celebrate winning the Stanley Cup championship. He said, I've got to stay true to my values. Power to him, man. That's, that's, that's you got a picture of him? That's 100. That's real. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's that's what you're supposed to do. Like, regardless to the situation, if this is how you feel, this is how you feel, you know. And I know it's hard because I know some of the NCAA champions have went. And it's hard being a, a, a student athlete and you got to kind of listen to your coach or whatever. But even still, I think, I think that the – even at that point, I know it's kind of off topic saying that, but even at that point, the coaches should leave it up to the players whether or not they want to attend. But uh, sh- shout out Brian. Yeah, Holt. And, and it's cool. It's probably surprise some people because let's be real. We, we, we tell the truth and shame the devil. You know, most people think if you don't watch hockey and you see this, I'm like, okay, it must be a black man. No, he's not. He's not. So, and, and, you, and you see it the other way around. You know, okay, if his values don't align with the president. We saw it where uh, I think the Bruins won the Stanley Cup and their goalie didn't go when Obama, Obama was in office. Yeah. So it's not, it's probably going to be more magnified now because, because of who's who's who the office, president right. yeah. is now. But I mean, I, it's, if it if it happens the other way, I mean, you can't really. You can't get mad at it. It's, it's across it's the, the board, right? Yeah. Like it's across the board. If you don't believe, if, it, if it's not who you are, it's you know not right. who you are. No, and you're right about that. <laughs> and at least he didn't right. like try to Craig Hodges the, situ- the situation. Oh my god! Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, shout anyway. out. That's, yeah, so y'all know that's one of the first black ballers uh, that's yeah, been black ball. Yeah, him and Mahmoud Abdul yeah. Raoul. Yep. <laughs> so all right, we're gonna take a quick <laughs> break, and we will be back with the hot topic. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's your girl, Kelsey Nicole Nelson, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great show. Good morning, this is Greg Hurd with your sports news break. The Atlanta Hawks are at the end of their tough home stretch tonight against the Philadelphia 76ers. Currently, the Hawks sit at 25 and 48. In spring training, the Atlanta Braves are getting closer to the season opener for next Thursday, and they will face the New York Mets today. Georgia State Panthers men's basketball lost big to the Houston Cougars 84-55 in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The Atlanta United will get much needed rest this weekend. Hopefully they will get back to their winning ways. They are 0-1-2 on this season. So make sure to follow the three-point conversion for all of your major sports news and updates. It's where fans' opinions matter. Hey folks, Handsome Josh is here to reveal some big news to all the AM 1100 listeners. I have an app. That's right, you can now check out all your favorite programs right here on The Real with The Real 1100 app. Whether it's sports, entertainment, or lifestyle, The Real 1100 definitely has you covered. So why don't you just tell me how much it's going to cost me? And here's the best part. It's available in your Google Play or Apple App Store, and it's free to download. Actually, you can count me in on this one. So download The Real 1100 app today and stay in tune with The Real. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Kent Bazemore from the Atlanta Hawks. You're now listening to Three Point Conversion. Stop 
Yes, yes. This is Mr. Controversy from Main Man D Intellectual inside a three point conversion sports lounge. And this next topic or segment, the hot topic, is brought to you by Cindy Cuts Barbershop, located on 3000 Chapel Hill Road, Suite 206, Douglasville, Georgia. Make sure you check them out. Great barbershop. They will take care of you. Everyone can cut. No empty chairs. Hey, what's my man name on um on the barbershop? What was Cedric's? Eddie. Eddie. We have an Eddie in the barbershop. My man Holyfield. What up, Holyfield? He's not as old, but that man know everything. Oh, oh Eddie. <laughs> also, uh, <laughs> talk. great. Uh, they talk. Great discussion. They talk sports, politics. Uh, they enter community into helping young kids and you know no fighting or anything like that you know if you if you get in a fight you get low key kicked out the barbershop even if you're a barber <laughs> what up I ain't gonna say that anyway uh, check out my man Dwayne Chambers <laughs> when you go in he's the barber all the way down to the left soon as you walk in the last barber on the left and then like I stated earlier shout out to Holyfield he's the last barber on the right what up Holy all right so, we're talking NBA MVP. So, we mentioned earlier, Harden scored 61 points last night against the San Antonio Spurs in a win. Now, I guess you would say the other um, candidate is Giannis What's it, say his last name? Because you know Greg can say everything. Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo. Got it. Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Yeah. Uh, when he said it, a piece of roast beef from 1989 <laughs> flew out of his mouth when he started. This <laughs> player. Antetokounmpo. But no, but um, yeah, you got um, Giannis. And then I still say Paul George. I say Paul George is a candidate. You can say Jokic. We're putting Jokic. A Jokic, you know, um, the Joker. So, let me ask you all, who is your? So, I'll start with you, D. Mm -hmm. Who would you say is the MVP right now and yeah, why? Giannis. The um, <clears throat> reason I said he, he, you know, and nothing against Harden because I know he didn't, he's, he's done his thing, right? Um, but Giannis has completely dominated. You know, and, and he's also doing it on the defensive end. So it's not just a one pony show. Um his numbers are crazy. He's he's gotten to the point where if he gets anywhere in the paint, he's dunking on you. Like like it's over with. <laughs> you know, I I just think his impact his, what his team also has done, right? Like he's okay, so you could say Chris Middleton is an all all star. He made the all star team, right? But I, he's Giannis is kind of I don't want to say he's by himself. But he's again, Chris Middleton made the All Star team, but I don't want to call him a a, a, a recurring All Star. Like he's not going, you know. I, I want to say he's going to be there all year, every year. Not to say that he's not; he's a good player. But right. you know, Giannis kind of by himself. You know, he's a superstar. He's not on one of them two, three superstar teams, and his team is the best record in the league. You got to reward him. Uh, for me, right now, it's uh, right now. It I would say Giannis. Um, even though like James Harden is, is capable of uh, what we saw him do last night, he's capable of that really on any given night. Mm -hmm. And it's something that he has had to do. Uh, so I know it will come down to voters. Like, which is, do you look like, uh, look at a player who did what he did like Harden out of necessity for his team or just with Giannis, like just, uh, making that next progression, taking that next step in his game. Right. Uh, but I think that what Harden did, like we thought, we thought that Houston was done in like December. Right. And now they sit at the, uh, I think they're the third seed right now uh, behind uh, Golden State and Denver. And so for in, for them to even get to that point, and it's a total, I feel like it's a totally different kind of season than what he had last year. Because Houston was so far out ahead of everyone, and they were a good defensive team, even though Harden still does not play defense, apparently. 
Uh, he plays a little, a he's little bit better, but not just that. If you actually look at his rating, he's highly rated as a yeah. Defender. So I, I think like, that's that's a narrative that has kind of continued because now I think people just assume it because now. of the whole. Of but the yeah, I looked at like, stuff well, it looks pre- like he's 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 playing defense sometimes yeah. at least more than LeBron. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> sad, like, but uh, <laughs> I think what he it's a totally he's having a different season than what he had last year. So. Uh, I don't think there'll be that voter fatigue if Harden happens to win it. So I agree with, I agree that Giannis, the fact that he's pushed his team over, and it's hard to take that away from somebody who has the best record, especially when he has, he's had an impact like he he's had. But let me just give you the last 10 games of Harden. So last night, 61 points. The game before that, 57 and 31 against Atlanta, 20 against Minnesota, 41, 41 against Phoenix, 29 against Golden State, 28 against Charlotte, 20 against Dallas, 31 against Philly, and 35 against Toronto. Four of them games, no, five of those games, he's had 10 assists or more. Six of those games, Seven of those games, he's had seven assists or more. So my point is, what he's doing is, I think he's averaging, what, 35 a game? And the fact that, yes, Milwaukee has the best record. Remember, Golden State, I mean, Houston was at one point the seventh seed, and they were looking, and they were – Injured, they you know they was, had injury problems with Chris Paul, and um, I think Eric Gordon was out a few games. But you had a lot of injuries, Compella, and he was scoring points like he had to. But even with them coming back, he's still scoring at a crazy, you know, uh, pace. And they're winning now. In, they're third, and like three games out of uh, what are they? Three games out of first place, something like that. Four games out of first place. So. I have to give it to Harden, man. What he's doing is historical, you know, and it's. What do they compare to Milwaukee's record as opposed to just the West? Because the West doesn't even have the best record in the NBA right now. Yeah, but <clears throat> Milwaukee, after after five teams in the East, it's a wrap. And, you know, where in the West you're battling one through ten is, is hard. But see, also with Houston, right? Like, that's their offense. You know what I mean? That's how their offense is made. You, but you can't say that because what did I say last week? With Giannis, what is their offense? Giannis have the ball. He does the same thing Harden does. Why, why not? He, he, only, Bled, he don't shoot threes. Ball, no, like, he doesn't. Or, or, Giannis, Giannis has the ball 19 seconds out of the 24-second shot clock. <laughs> they play the same <laughs> style. It's just hard to shoot 53s a night. That's it. You say shoot how many? 50. But then, okay. <laughs> But we talked about George. At about, one fi- about 15 a game, right? Right, e- right. E- Easy shoot 10 to 15 a 15 game, 15 right? easily. But look, I had I had par George at one time. And you all can call in at 404-603-8770 if you have a comment or so. But I had par George. And the fact that OKC has dropped, I'm kind of like, you know, I think he's kind of fell out. Because mm-hmm. what OKC okay, right now is. Yeah, they've been falling fit. and falling. Yeah, yeah, they've been falling. He was out for about a week, too. And then he was hurt, like right. Week or two. So, and, well, they're, okay, they're fifth now. I think they were eighth like Thursday. Yeah. Because the Cause only, yeah, it's so tight. Two games, ain't it? Like, right. Isn't it two games that's yeah. separating eight and five or something? So, uh, half a game. Half. So, what about, so, so what about, what about the Joker then? The Joker, they're. They're tied for the best record in the West, the Denver Nuggets. Mm-hmm. And you've seen what type of uh, season he's had and how he's impacted that team. I mean, he's the center. He's their assist leader. And yeah. if he wanted to score 25 a night, he could. Well, he averages 20 right now. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, if he, he can average five, six more points a game. I think he's a young Arvidas of bonus. And that's what we miss with our Vitas. Yeah. We miss his, I like people don't know when he came to the league, he had been playing professional like 10, 15 years. Yeah. 
Right. <laughs> the, what, him coming to the league, he was he was already broken. Yeah, he right. Was, he was broke. He was, already broken. he was like thirty six yeah. years old. He was moving in slow motion with the trailblazers. I'm talking about and still balling too, and he was still balling too. <laughs> the passes so, and yeah, I think with with Denver, the uh, you got to have who's the best player because they have such a good record. Who's the best player? And I think that's why he's in the um, why he's in the conversation. Uh, I, I guess the the more interesting storyline for me as far as Jokic goes is will he make the uh all NBA, NBA first team. team it's either going to be him or Embiid because with that you have to have it they go two guards two fours mm. and a center mm. not like with the all-star voting yeah so who do you pick Embiid or it's him? between him and Embiid but if he's the MVP candidate you have to yeah. go him not necessarily I mean that it doesn't always happen that way as far as if you're an MVP candidate yeah you're going to get the first team votes but, I mean, I, we haven't seen it with the All NBA team, but I know with the defensive uh, All Defensive team, a guy who won uh, Defensive Player of the Year is on the second team. Yeah, that's, that's dumb. Right, I've seen it <laughs> plenty of times. <laughs> that don't even dumb. make sense. Like, how does that make sense? I agree. All right. So, is, is there any other guys that you would throw in? So, I, I, if you all don't have one. I know everybody say uh, they tired of him, but it's for show. Sure. Steph. Steph. He's yeah, having I would 28. include Steph. I mean, if you're going to include Steph, you can add, include KD. I think Steph's had a. KD's had a great year, but I think Steph year has been better. What about Russ? I mean, you can can you not put Russ in the average in the triple double? Again? Like seriously, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I think with with Russ, like the. The scoring is down, but it's twenty. It's still, but I know it's still a triple double. It's twenty two like, points. But, like I can see if it's like twelve. Like he had Rondo. Like people. Like he's won one MVP, but people are tired of like, it, like it's tired like, of it's yeah. ho hum with the triple double season. And that's not. And to me, that's how I feel like with Harden. I think in a sense, people are going Giannis because. Well, Harden is like, okay. Because it's someone else's but, turn. But you know that's how it goes. Uh, think about it. How many MVPs could Michael Jordan have won? He probably could have won like eight. Eight to ten, right? Mm-hmm. He got how many? Six? Five. Five. Because the one that. Cause the, the, first off, the Charles Barkley, the Carl Malone. Yeah, you know I was going to say Carl Malone. That's two, that's two of them right there. You, you can maybe say Chuck because of what he did that year for yeah, Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix had the best record like, in the league. Yeah, and, so you can kind of get – that Carl Malone one, though, like – That was people being tired of but, it. Being tired but, of yeah. and wanted to give tired, Carl Malone give Carl Malone one. They wanted to give him one. And yeah. that was the – like uh, the Bulls won the 72 games the year before. Right. The next year, I think they won 69 games. Yeah, like, like – Almost a down year. We got to give it to somebody else. And he just averaged 30. That's yeah. it. He just averaged 30. And see, and this is why I say with Harden, I want Harden to win it. I want – but – I, Giannis deserve it. I get it. I wouldn't be mad at all. But it's been a couple of years that Harden got cheated out of the MVP. The year when Steph won it, the second year, like, and it was unanimously. Like, come on, man. Yeah. He won it unanimously. Like, really? What did he do first unanimously? Yeah, yeah. And it that, could have been you, Harden the the next year when Westbrook won it, but he won. He but you had it. Double. I understood so, Westbrook. Yeah, yeah. But you know, everybody. Um, <clears throat> Was they had that Steph fever, right? Like wasn't that year was that them two or three years where it was that Steph fever? But that's also go, g- going to go into why Steph doesn't win it because his time kind of came and went. And not saying he's not a good player, but you know how publicity is and who's the biggest star right now. And but then when you put his number up against anybody, like it's yeah, comparable, you know? Yeah, like right. I I don't know. Like I said, it's tough. I wouldn't be mad if if Giannis gets it. I'm standing up clapping as well. Mm-hmm. Just because of they have the best record. Don't give it to him. <laughs> but the way Harden is playing, like Hart is, it, it, you know what it reminds me of. Luca has been so consistent throughout. But Trey Young might come steal it. But the way Trey is playing is like steal it. He might come steal it. Man. If not Cole. But put what people, you know, people always holler, hollering Cole Cole. There hasn't been many Cole rookies of the year. No, nah, it's only been four. You know what I mean? 
So I know we hollered at a lot because of the great seasons people be at, but that's more than likely not going to happen. Let me ask y'all Quick this question. I, I'm going to leave it. If, if there's a co MVP, would y'all be mad? <laughs> Yeah. I feel like there was a, it will be a conspiracy for yeah. it to be a tie. <laughs> Do you think that they should maybe offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, come up with different awards like the um, NFL does? If they do what? Offensive player of the year, defensive No, because to me that year. don't make sense to me, the offensive player of the year and then you got an MVP. That doesn't – and the defensive player of the year. Because if, if the offensive player – if the MVP is the offensive player – it should be the offensive player of the year. I mean, he should be the offensive player of the year also. You can't be a quarterback, but a running back win offensive player of the year, but you're the MVP. That doesn't make sense. And I get it. I'm just saying, like, it, it gets difficult in situations like that, right? Because you got a quiet, right? And quiet. He puts up major defensive numbers, and his offensive game is good too, but it may not be hardened because of the season Harden has. True, because yeah. then you could play defense. But see, it's di- I'm talking about <laughs> NFL, though. NFL is yeah. different. Yeah. NBA, I could get that. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back to talk some hoops, college hoops. Keep it locked. What's up, man? It's Metal World Peace. Shout out to the Three Point Conversion Radio. There's a lot going on in the world, and your world is always changing. That's why it's important to stay connected. The latest news, the latest entertainment, the newest music. If it's in the air or on the air, it can be in the palm of your hand, wherever you are, with the iHeartRadio app. iHeartRadio. Over 1,500 live radio stations from across the country and over 15 million songs to create your own custom stations. Mm. Text IHR to 45495 to download the app or listen at iHeartRadio.com. Standard text and data rates apply. Hey, I'm Diana Taurasi from the Phoenix Mercury, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion Radio. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. I want to ask a quick question before we bring our guests on. Mm-hmm. You didn't do a bracket, right? No. Can we get a stop it for him for not doing a, bra- a bracket? Just don't do it for me, man. <laughs> now I know he not only stop he, it. He, he he did say he tried before and he missed yeah, it. Yeah, had don't. a lot going on. Yeah, the Sunday the night before, so I got you. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> G, do you, did you do a bracket? Yep. How how you looking? It's bad. Probably. Real bad. <laughs> it's bad. But how you looking compared to whose bracket you're on? Are you on a major major bracket? Yeah, it's one with like I don't know, maybe like a hundred people. So, see, that's what kind of like I don't want to say it confuses me, right? But like after the first day, your bracket tore up, but you're still in it. How you still in it? And your bracket messed up. Well, because you're not going for the best. Right. And it, you ain't for, going for the It's for the top. percentage. Right. It ain't for the percentage right. of games you get right. So can and, I? And then where the four, the, who gets to the Elite Eight in the f- yeah. Final Four and, and bef- all of that. Can I get another stop it? Jeez. Just hold, hold, your, fin- it. hold your finger right. down. That's for, no, that's, that's for G. Uh, How you going to do a, a bracket and you don't do it for the three-point conversion? Nope. Uh, I'm, not, not, I'm not, not obligated to do one for the three-point conversion. How you, how you three-point conversion you don't do one for the. Hey, look, I produce your show. I cover these games. And you supposed to do I a break. I am doing enough. <laughs> I am doing enough for y'all. I have said, ain't enough. even got enough time to do it. Do it so. <laughs> I, I couldn't pull it up. Right. right. I was at a game. <laughs> right, dog. All right. Um, let me ask somebody else how their bracket is going. Deshaun, what's going on, man? How's your bracket? What up, though, man? Top of the morning to you guys. Um, let, let me get a couple things out of the way. Number one, this, I'm, this is going to be real quick. Number one, 
my bracket's busted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I say busted, when I say but first of all, just because you don't have them all right, people don't understand this stuff. Just because you don't have a perfect bracket does not mean your bracket is busted. But this is the best part about filling out brackets is you guys can hear the birds in the background chirping because they're getting excited about college basketball <laughs> too. I'm outside kicking it. So this is the thing is that as long as you have your a uh, final four still intact for the most part. You're, 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 you're all right with me. Now, a lead eight, if you still got that intact, even better. Okay, but what planet is this brother on that doesn't fill out? Who does not fill out a freaking bracket? <laughs> and like, if we had any, if we had any thoughts that there's aliens, you know, people say, oh, there's aliens. <laughs> The aliens, it's real. It's true. This brother has to be an alien. You don't fill out a bracket. How is that possible? Even if you don't watch a game. Deshaun. Just still, just Deshaun. Deshaun. That's a crazy part. I've been watching all the games. You have an option. You can pick all birds if you want to. You can pick mascots. You can pick colors. You can pick vacation destinations. Just pick one. Hey, Deshaun. mascot wins in a fight. Mother Jenkins at the church called me and asked me for some help for her bracket. <laughs> and you ain't doing uh, right. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> But anyway, bro, man. Bro, 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 Sister Johnson got a bracket. Right. Bro. <laughs> All right, man. But look. Give me a stop. It, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm you very disappointed in stop you. It. I'm very disappointed. All right, man. Look. So going to the tournament, uh, first question I got to ask is after the first two days, what has what team has raised your eyebrows so far? Um. There's, there's a few, you know. When you look at what Oklahoma was able to do in an eight nine game, which typically those eight nine games are really close, much like the seven ten seed matchups. Uh, you know, thinking about what they did against Ole Miss in that game, one by thirty, scored ninety five points. I think that's the most points that they've ever scored uh, for us in terms of from a program standpoint ever in the history of an NCAA tournament. Uh, Buffalo looked really good. I, I thought that they were probably going to struggle with. Arizona State, who's one of the most inconsistent teams, and that doesn't surprise me because they're in the Pac-12, and we're just being real. They stink. Um, Wofford did what I thought Wofford was going to do, and they're going to be a very, very tough out for Kentucky. Whether you got P.J. Washington or you don't have P.J. Washington, Wofford has a lot of those guys that can shoot. And if we're just being real, we ought to play basketball before. This isn't a race thing. You know, white boys can shoot. That's what we know white boys do. They can shoot, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, and they do it well, and I think that they're going to propose some really tough problems for uh, for Kentucky. Liberty, obviously, and UC Irvine with or without Dean Wade for Kansas State, I think is obviously a good one. And then last but certainly not least, Houston looked really good. I thought Georgia State can probably put forth a little bit more damage uh, than that. Oregon looked really tough. Let me tell you something about Oregon real quick in terms. Uh, let me explain something to you. Bobo went, went with went out with an injury, a foot injury, and that, I thought, put Oregon in a vulnerable position uh, based on looking at the rest of their team. They have a little bit of experience, not a ton, but they have a little bit of experience returning from that Final Four team that they had with Dylan Brooks and, and, and all of those guys just a couple of years ago. But they got a guy by the name of Lewis King, who I think is a pretty good pick for the Atlanta Hawks, a six nine guy in the second round, of course, not one of those top five picks or anything like that. But uh, last but certainly not least, Kenny Wooten. If you haven't seen this guy, Kenny Wooten, before, he's a monstrous dunker. Is he Zion Williamson? No. Uh, but he is in the same category in terms of athleticism. He's one of the top three most athletic guys in this tournament. So if you don't know him, you better get him on your radar really quickly because this dude can jump high and and, and one of the top three most athletic guys in, in, in this tournament alongside of John Morant. And uh, Zion Williams, the dude might block his shot and, and knock it out, knock somebody popcorn uh, over, <laughs> knock over their nachos and cheese or something. Man, this dude is serious. Now, speaking of John Moran, we know he's been t- been the talk of the tournament. How high do you think his stock is going up, and do you think he can lead Murray State to an upset of Florida State? Can he do it? Uh, yeah, he can. Uh, but I, 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 I don't realistically see that happening considering the fact that Florida State is tall. They got a dude on their team, uh, 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 Cabin Gelly, who's like 7'3", and, and he's not just the only guy they got. I think their point guard in, in Terrence Mann is probably somewhere around 6'4", 6'5", you know, big guard, and everybody from there on up, especially in the starting lineup, is, 
is really uh, is really tall, and they're really athletic, and they're experienced. They went to the lead eight last year. Phil Colfer, one of their players, even though he's hurt, he's out with an injury. They're playing for something a little bit bigger than that, considering the fact that his dad just passed away, and he found out after the game. But uh, you know, they're not exactly the most disciplined team in the world either, and so that's where I think that Murray State stands a chance. Am I taking Murray State to win? I'm not, but when you have a guy that can put up a triple double, I think he had what John Morant 17 points and 11 rebounds and 16 assists or some kind of crazy stat line like that. Uh, do they have a chance based on the fact that they're getting off the bus and Florida State has to show up too? I think they have a chance, but I didn't pick them to win. And once again, we're here live with Deshaun Tate from, um, and you can follow him at Tate's Take Sports, and that's T A T E S. T A K E S P O R T. So, with an S, don't forget the S on the in the sports. Don't forget the S, oh, baby. Sports, right? Sports. I'm sorry. Don't nobody say sport anymore. That's the old people say. Hey, a sport. You know, hey, sport. They should know that. But no, I feel you though. Sports, <laughs> you know, some people are illiterate. So, all right. Who is the most vulnerable number one seed? All of them are still alive. But who do you think is the most vulnerable number one seed in the tournament? Well. And <laughs> It's funny you ask that because going into this tournament, I thought the team was Gonzaga, but we saw obviously Virginia struggle for much of that game, which probably isn't a surprise if you remember the UMBC game from last year. Uh, we saw Duke struggle in the first half last week. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, the other night we saw North Carolina struggle in the first half against Iona uh, last night. So. Gonzaga look like they're the strongest number one seed. If you're just basing this on just this simple one game, I think that they are the team uh, uh, that looks the strongest. I think that uh, probably Virginia is the team that looks like that they're you know the most vulnerable. Uh, but for whatever reason, I know people. A lot of people are going to disagree about this. But it's between North Carolina and Virginia, I mean, right now it looks like the team is Virginia because they have the most pressure on them. I was really concerned of coming into this tournament how much they would be thinking about the UMBC loss and would they be playing to win or would they be playing not to lose and how much film did you know Gardner Webb watch on the UMBC game and all that kind of stuff. But that's just the way that they play. I listened to it on uh, uh, yesterday in the post game. Uh, interviews and listening to Ty Jerome, a starting guard with Kyle Guy. This is the way we play. We're, we didn't change up our style of play for, you know, UNBC. We weren't going to change it up for Gardner Webb. We didn't change it up all season. We're not going to change it up now. That's just the way that we play. But the experience from losing to UNBC helped them out at the half. Uh, of that Gardner Webb game where they were able to, you know, kind of pull it together and and didn't get, you know, too crazy in terms of shaking up and really nervous and anxiety kicked in and all that kind of stuff got outside of their game. They're stuck to their guns, but uh, I think North Carolina is that team because three reasons I think, and this is why I, I, I personally feel this way: a guy like a Luke May. I really, you know, uh, I'm not sure that I really trust him in terms of being the leader of this team uh, where you have to hang your hat on him so much. Is he a good player? Absolutely, especially considering the fact that he's a former walk-on. So I like him in that from that standpoint. But this is Carolina, and this is when they go home. And I don't trust Luke May. And then you got Kobe White, who's also a really good talent. But he's a freshman point guard as well. You mix all of that with a guy like Nasir Little who came into the season as a guaranteed lottery pick, top five perhaps. Now that position is kind of swapped out with John Morant, obviously, but uh, Nasir Little has been non-existent for much of the year. Coming off the bench, we don't know what that situation looks like. He had 19 points last night, but I can't guarantee you we'll see that again. I think it's North Carolina. Between North Carolina, 1A and 1B, North Carolina and Virginia, but I think it's North Carolina. At the end of that, because I got Virginia going to the Final Four. Mm. All right. One last question, it's 20 seconds. Uh, who, is, who has the best chance to be that Cinderella team in the East Bracket? We saw what, all three te- three of the four teams, I think. Three of the teams in the East Bracket won, upset. Who do you think? I don't know. Uh, in that East Bracket, the, 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 the best chance? Uh, that's. That's tough. I, I I really don't think that is UCF. I really don't think that it is that 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 is Liberty. Um, that's that's a that's a that's a heck of a tough question. I I might feel like I have to go with Liberty just because of the fact of the favorable matchup they have against Virginia Tech. Watched them against Georgia Tech earlier this season where they shot eighteen percent from 
three and, and like 23% from the field and still won by three. I think there's some vulnerability there. And the Liberty head coach was a uh, was an assistant for six seasons under Tony Bennett at UVA before he got this job at Liberty. And those guys have a lot of confidence. I think I'll just have to go with them for now. So you're giving Minnesota no chance against against Sparty. <laughs> oh, they got a chance. Oh, they got a chance. Especially when you look at the you look at what Bradley did to Michigan State. They definitely got a chance. They need to stop killing my boy Izzo the way they're doing. But I think they got a chance, not even just because of that, but even more so uh, because of the fact that uh, you know they're, they're playing the same conference, so they're already familiar with them already. So we'll see. All right, there you have it, my man Deshaun Tate. Make sure you follow him at Tate's T A T E S Take T A K E. Sports, S P O R T S. All right, there sir. There we go, baby. Don't forget the S. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hey, man, you probably know it's next week if you ain't somewhere covering the game. So, uh, uh, but yeah, I'll be hitting you up. I love to, man. Appreciate you guys. All right. I'm going to take a quick break. We have some NFL proposed rules. This is going to be <laughs> hilarious. Very we'll be right back. Hey, what's good? It's your boy Nate Burles from the NFL Network and CBS. When the hell is to do it? Hey, you listening to the Three Point Conversion Radio? Don't you go anywhere. It's lit. It's lit. It's lit. It's lit. Have a sports injury? Need to see an orthopedic doctor? Ortho Atlanta is one of Metro Atlanta's largest orthopedic and sports medicine practices, providing orthopedic and sports medicine care for the whole family. With 37 physicians and 14 offices, the practice provides the highest level of care for injury of muscles, joints, bones, and spine. Ortho Atlanta offers convenient access to a full range of musculoskeletal surgeons and specialists. Ortho Atlanta also offers on-site physical therapy, pain management care, MRI imaging, and workers' compensation care. The Ortho Atlanta Surgery Centers in Austell and Fayetteville provide cost-effective same-day surgical procedures in an accredited outpatient center. Hip, knee, shoulder, back pain? Ortho Atlanta has you covered with specialists in all areas. Same-day appointments, orthopedic care for the whole family. Ortho Atlanta. Atlanta's choice for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Learn more at www.orthoatlanta.com. Happy Saturday, sports fans. It's your boy, Sherm, a.k.a. the Lord of the Beats, and you are currently inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge with my man's Mr. Controversy. D intellectual and of course my dog G behind the boards. Cheers to the freaking weekend. All right, we are back inside the three point conversion sports lounge. All right, so. The NFL came up with some um, rule proposals, right? Like they do every year. And some, most of them don't get entertained. Or, well, they get entertained. Some of them don't get looked at, you know, or they don't change them, most of them. But you get it. But still, we want to look at these proposals and who they're from. <laughs> so That is important. That's the most important. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. right. Very important. Because <laughs> you saw some stuff like, Y'all still crying about We know exactly why. You right, right. Mm-hmm. So let's start off with the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> Who played the New England Patriots and they lost in overtime, overtime when Tom Brady got the ball and they took it <laughs> all the way down to a score, right? Yeah, you got to stop them. The defense should be great. But anyway, this is the rule that the Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> proposed. They propose that both teams should be able to get a chance to get the ball in overtime, even if the first team scores a touchdown. Honestly, that's not that bad of a proposal. I heard a lot of fans 
say, say that. that. But but they say, say that, that because they lose. Do you agree? Now, I'm again. I'm old school. I, li- I like how the game has been played. First person that score, like that's it. You know what I mean? But I'm also old school. You know, it's a right. lot of stuff that I don't agree with that I don't like. Right. I like how the game has been played. You know what I mean? Like, and, and as we get into more of these proposals, it's going to get more into me saying I like how the game has been right. played. Right. <laughs> what do you think, G? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm cool with the way the overtime is now. And I don't think a lot of people think, well, it just comes down to a coin flip. It's all about luck. I don't really think it is because I think that if you win the toss, you're going to take the ball and you're going to be more aggressive to try mm-hmm. to score. Mm-hmm. But I still think, like, look, the defense has to stop you. That's it. And we see a lot of times to where it doesn't it doesn't happen as often as people think right. as far as a, a touchdown being scored on, on the, the first, first drive. drive. Right. Uh, I, I'm actually still okay. And I think – well, I'm not okay with it anymore because I, I like how it is now. But the previous uh, overtime rule where it really did come down to the coin toss because all you have to do is get into field goal That's range. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it's okay. I'm okay with it now to where, yeah, you can kick a field goal and I still get a I chance. I still get a chance, yeah. yeah. But a touchdown, look, and, and put it like this, in that AFC championship, that was a one-yard touchdown. That was a long drive, okay? So the yeah. defense had their chance to get stopped. And they almost ran most of the clock out. Like, seriously. Like, they had the ball almost yeah. and, all and, in all. And I, they kept completing and, third yeah. downs. And I understand that disadvantage during the regular season because yeah. if you get the ball first, basically you can act like there is no clock. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you have a Tom Brady, you know, like we see how Tom Brady does, right? Like in in a two minute offense, Tom Brady doesn't run a two minute offense like most people do. Everybody's ready to call their timeouts. There are times when Tom Brady does not call a timeout during the two minute drive. That that is that is trust in your offense coordinator. No. That's trust in your line. Yeah. And everybody is on the same, same page because if they get eight yards, okay, we know we gotta we gotta get up and let's, go. Let's so. get up and go. And normally those kind of drives are scripted. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't like it. Like, because your defense has to play. <laughs> if your defense can't stop them, you don't. Deserve you don't deserve to win. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's especially that's a touchdown. It. That's what it is. All right, next rule. So. This rule is proposed by the Denver Broncos. They want an alternative to the onside kick that will allow the team that is trailing to get the ball back. Kind of like the AAF. The AAF, they have it to where it's like a a fourth and eight play or whatever, and you got to get the eight, you know. No. Right. I, I, no, I'm not giving you – no. Special teams is part of the, yes. the team. Play ball. You're but, not, not going to be down 14-7 and I got – and then I just give you the ball, fourth and eight. So you can like, – yeah, Well, I, I, I can understand the proposal here only because the onside kick is close to impossible. To they convert need, now. Okay, so then you should score. So look, no, the way that the, the way no, that the, the, the rule was the changed with the now. onside so wait, kick. I, and I did. I we didn't put it in. So there was a proposal which probably will get really will looked at and probably be changed. They're asking to go back to how it used to be or a way on they the, can on the onside kick because it's impossible to yeah, get it. It is like every blue moon somebody get it. Like you, you, you get a one yard head start. <laughs> so basically, you, you, it's it's uh, no a, head start. No head start. <laughs> And the the, so the, ball is the receiving already, team yeah, they already, already the like yeah. they can go they can be aggressive and yeah. go after the ball, but you gotta wait for it to go to, <laughs> to somebody. For and you, you to, and yeah. you see these teams try all kinds of stuff. People they still try the Drop, have the kicker kick. and the punter yeah. out there. Oh the oh the punter's the coming. No nope, no nope, <laughs> the kicker's coming. No that, kick. that never works. They do the drop yeah. kick. They do, like it's so much that they do it. I, yeah, it, yeah. No, it, none of their stuff. To me, go back to the old way as opposed to this. You just I mean, like, I wonder what numbers that they have on. Like, I understand, like, getting rid of the wedge uh, and then moving right. the kickoff up to avoid these, like, these those kind of collisions. But is that really happening on the onside kick but like you, that? But you know what? Think about it. The onside kick and the kickoff are one of the two most exciting plays in football to where 
you want to see, especially when they return it, because you, you want to see a long mm-hmm. touchdown return or even a big hit. Mm-hmm. Onside kick, same thing. You want to see if mm-hmm. it's, I mean, yeah. So, I, like, I'm not mad at this, though, but I don't like the, we're not about to do a. We're not about to give you the ball. And the way the, yeah. the, <laughs> the, way the, the, way the kickoff is gone, while the ball's in the air, you pretty much know what's going to like. Yeah, is yeah, is that guy going to take it out, yeah. or is he going to let it go out of bounds? So they, they, I, they put the hands out, and I hate that. Right. And like, I, I'm not about to give you the ball fourth and eight. You down seven, and then one big play happens, and now it's a tie game just because you got the ball on on on. on I mean, I just believe that special teams is a part of yeah of uh, playing football of the, of the team. If you're gonna do that, get, what you gonna get? What's next? Getting rid of kickoffs and punch. Period. That's what they're trying to do. And you just do. gonna start at the twenty. That's what they're trying to do. AAF and on the punt, depending on where you at, what we just gonna say fifty yards. Like that's the punt, just fifty yards from where where the line of scrimmage at. Nah, I don't get. I don't like that. <laughs> All right. So here's another one. This was proposed by the Washington Redskins. <laughs> Every play that all plays in the game, they, they propose that all plays in the game should be reviewable, including pass interference and all penalties. Games would be six hours long. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me give uh, Washington a stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> you give a stop it for that? Yeah, man. You, like he said, the game yeah, would be six true. hours long. They're reviewing every play. Yeah. I mean, people say, like, there's holding on every play. But I guess you, 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 they're gonna go back and review where the whole like a holding on so every single play. What 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 happened is you still get your two or three challenges. Yeah, and you have to have two. You, hey, that's what you use it on. I, I I like this if you're saying that it's still the rules still apply as only on turnovers, but everything else, like the coaches has to make that decision. I want to throw the flag or not. When do we leave it to the human eye? Like, are are we getting away from that? It's like, is that like... Man, the way the refs are calling stuff, the human eye... I, 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 okay, I feel you, okay. though. I feel you, though. But I feel you, too, though, school, on, right. on, on the... Because that one play... I mean, I would rather have the... Uh, doesn't the AAF have the, the... I don't know if it's called the eye in the sky, the sky judge, or yeah. something like that? I don't know how the sky... If the sky judge is another... Make that another referee, and he can just... I don't know where the flag will come from. <laughs> would it drop from the right. camera or right. what? But, right. like... If they see something that isn't called, they could like yeah, have, the, it, have even, that have that referee, a video referee, have the authority to call something. Even if it's back wherever, like where that NFL headquarters, right? Like yeah. you know, even if they call it and you know, what I mean, play call back or this happened or because it. Of course, we're mainly. I don't want to say we're mainly talking about that pass interference that should have happened, um, but you know, that's one of the instances where okay, I can understand. You know what mm-hmm. I mean, like somebody at the NFL, or even have a line judge that's, I guess, on it uh, more. Maybe. <laughs> and that was another rule proposal. Also, they had like a a specific line judge or referee that does that. Now they can also. I will also say if they did the last two minutes, you give a coach an extra flag. Yeah. If they hadn't ran out or yeah. something like that, or if they yeah. want to, I guess it's the same thing. But yeah, but I mean. <laughs> GK must stop it. All right, so <laughs> here's the last one. And this was made by the Philadelphia Eagles. To me, this was the most interesting one. So they proposed that on Thanksgiving Day that the uh, that the Dallas Cowboys and Detroit Eagles should still continue to play on Thanksgiving. You mean the Lions? The Lions. I mean Lions. I'm sorry. What did I say? The Eagles. Eagles. <laughs> I put Detroit Eagles. My bad. I was trying to see when they Detroit moved. Lions. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Detroit Lions should continue to play on Thanksgiving. But one team should be at home while the other team should be on the road. Then they pulled it, then they pulled it back. I guess somebody gave them a stop at us. <laughs> they pulled it back. But what do you all think, though? I mean, they always play, don't they? No. No, just, but they no. always play, but you, you heard what he said, though. Did you hear me? So one team should be at home while the other play on the road. Oh. So they hope that they could play Dallas or Detroit at home, at home and so they can throw snow balls at them and right. beer bottles and all they, that they stuff. They looked at their schedule. They know they probably played them on Thanksgiving yeah. next year or something. 
But do y'all? But I mean, do you feel that though? Would you be opposed to that? I mean, or is it just because we? I guess I'm just so used to it. It's, right. They've been doing it for over sixty years, right? So what are you really talking about? He's just talking about the home and away. That's really the biggest key. Yeah, they want it to be where one team. Because every you know, Dallas always play in Dallas and Detroit playing Detroit. What I would so propose saying, is, uh, there's no third Thanksgiving game. Yeah, because man, yeah. you kind of taking whoever, away whoever Detroit plays, whoever Dallas plays. That's, that's it. Because yeah. look, because if you're covering or you have a sports company, or you you have to write about, now you have to miss out on everything at home, <laughs> so, so you can watch, watch this game. Games. Whereas, like last year, I ain't gonna lie. It was with family. We want to play games. We want to play, yeah. you know. And eat good. Cut somebody out for reneging. You know how right. it goes. Get that spade game going. All right. So, yeah, those those were just a couple from, like, 50. So, it gets worse. Pretty much. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with a Stop It segment. We almost had it already. I know, right? <laughs> What's happening? It's your man Big Take doing big things. Y'all know what it is. ATL Hawks official DJ and Rap City Forever. You're checking out the Three Point Conversion Radio. You dig? You are tuned into WWE Hakeville. AM 1100. The opinions expressed during the sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. Are you tired of avoiding great-tasting food because you want to eat healthy? Well, Salad Express will fix that problem for you. Salad Express is a gourmet salad and grill restaurant that gives you multiple options to satisfy your taste buds and keep you healthy. They have over 40 toppings, which are cut fresh daily, seven homemade soups, and even chili. You can also order hot sandwiches and wraps with choices like grilled chicken, steak, salmon, and shrimp, which can be added to salads too. So go ahead and visit them today at 1055 Mansell Road, Suite 600, Roswell, Georgia, and 1171 La Vista Road Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia. Call their Roswell location at 770 780-5992 680-5992 or the La Vista Road location at 404-929-8828 and don't forget to let them know the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge sent you No mercy, don't let up on them Go hard on them, Mr. Controversy Hit them with the stop it button All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. I want to give a shout out to everyone who has been supporting us. We appreciate you, and we we thank you for your support. I was about to give a stop it. <laughs> I'm not. I was about to get a stop it. Never mind. All right, so um, <laughs> I'll tell y'all later. <laughs> I would tell you too, Dwayne Chambers. But anyway, this segment right here is the most infamous, the most famous stop it segment. Let's, Let's get, get it. it. I have another stop it. The G. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Maybe you hear me. This is the most infamous, <laughs> the most famous stop it segment. Let's get it. Stop 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 it. Yes. S-T-O-P. New word. I Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. Oh, man. All right, D, it's on you. So, yeah, I had two, but I'm just going to throw out one today. Um, I'm going to give a stop it to the selection committee at the NCAA tournament for putting Minnesota, who's coached by Rick Patino's son, Richard, <laughs> against Louisville. <laughs> 
but they need to double stop it because I'm not sure if they thought Louisville was going to win, but they did Minnesota pulled it out. Right, man. Stop it. They knew that. They just wanted to bring up <laughs> Patino and all of yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Thought That's they crazy. had it, man. They gave him, he gave them what they asked for. G? All right, mine goes to um, – Mine goes to uh, CBS Sports. Yes, I know they have been doing tournament for like 100 years. But to employ something called a Zion cam. <laughs> what? <laughs> a Zion cam. Me with uh, Duke, I, I can't recall who they're exactly playing in the second round. But uh, there will be a camera just on Zion Williamson. Everything he does, even when he's on the bench... Tiny shoe, yeah, that's too much, chewing gum. Man. That's too much. Cameras on him. Yeah, stop. And it. a lot of a lot of people, a lot of uh, current NBA players responded. They're like, "Okay, y'all putting money into this, but he can't make any of it." Wow. Period. So that's ridiculous. Day to stop it. Wait, I just got stop a, it. I just got a report from LB LB Broadus, not LA, but LB Broadus. That LeBron James said he. Um, He's jealous of that. Why he didn't get one? Yeah. <laughs> he said, why he didn't get one? Well, I don't have one. <laughs> All right. Quickly, my stop it. I'm stick with college, not college basketball, but football. My college, I'm in my college. My stop it goes to Florida Atlantic coach Lane Kiffin. Kiffin went off about the transfer portal and said he's against it and said it's just a sexy thing to do for players. Stop it. Now, if you all don't watch college football, Lane Please Kiffin. Please know who Lane Kiffin is and what he be on. And how much he's transferred. <laughs> no, what, no, specifically, yeah, like, yeah. ask the people at the University of Tennessee. Period. Right. Tennessee. About Lane Kiffin. Tennessee, uh, USC. USC. Uh, what the Florida, Atl- some Florida team He was for Atlantic now, but <laughs> come on. Stop it, Lane Kiffin, man. Get out of here. Stop it. it. Like they shouldn't be able to do that. Right. right. You shouldn't. You left you the, Tennessee you, right. you after, the, after five minutes. You're the last person that be, <laughs> to be telling somebody what they shouldn't be able to right. do. And that, but that goes into the NCAA history, right? Like coaches and things can do what they want, but it would come to players. Yep. It's like, no. All right. So that concludes our Stop It segment. We're going to take a quick break. Everybody get ready. Get your freshmen who do you think is the best, not who do you think, who was the best college freshman basketball player you ever saw in their freshman year? Right, we'll meaning right you back. ever saw. Yeah, you ever, not stats. Right. What you saw, we'll be right back. Let me break down to y'all what's so dope about the three-point conversion. First of all, everybody is a fan of the game first. Second of all, everybody is a student of the game second. And third of all, we're the average sports fan just like everybody else. We're not coming in here, walking with our nose tipped high, acting snooty, acting brand new. This is a grassroots organization. Bar none. The three-point conversion where fans' opinions matter. Be sure to visit the website www.the3pointconversion.com Get your fix, get your articles, multimedia, and everything else that you as a sports fan need. So again, the3pointconversion.com It's where it's at, man, where fans' opinions matter. This is Av Stanley, senior writer for the Three Point Conversion, and you know I'm listening to Mr. Controversy and D Intellectual on the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Tell them what's going on. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Okay, real quick, I wouldn't be me if I didn't do it. I got, I got to stop it real quick. I'm going to give a stop it to um, Dwayne Chambers. Uh, my dude, I just got done saying that they always got somebody to cut. And when it's time for the stop it segment, we do our little stop it thing. He said he ain't got, he don't have anybody. 
I'm just, but he had the person he has already been on the stop, so that's. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, D. <laughs> stop it! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he gonna be hitting you in a minute. So. I know, right? <laughs> All right, man. So, so now since we have the Zion cam, <laughs> we want to know because. Evidently, they think he's the best freshman ever. In history of, of the world. <laughs> right. Of any sport. Any sport ever. Right. So, I want to know, I want to know, uh, I want to know that what what person, um, person, what player, what freshman in uh, college basketball now, during their freshman year, what was the best freshman or who was the best freshman you ever saw? Uh, so I was going to go a couple ways, right? Like I was <clears> – <throat> first I was thinking of Jay Williams, but then I really got to thinking um, Kevin Durant had a great season. Michael B. Y'all don't know – maybe Jamal. We don't want to mention them all. Uh, I want you to say one because some people might have okay. it. Okay. I'm, um, I'm going to go with Carmelo. Uh, he, w- he was unstoppable uh, that year, and, and he went on to win the NCAA tournament. So you can't ask for much more as a freshman. Uh, the best one I saw was uh, Anthony Davis. Um, just watching the championship game, he he shot the ball terribly. He was like one for 12 or something. But he had like 14 rebounds, five assists, four blocks. Like he dominated the game without scoring. As a freshman, that sounds impossible. All right. I'm going to go against Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is a beast. Only reason why I wouldn't – Anthony Davis had more players. And he didn't – he dominated as far as, like you said, he would – he scored like, what, average, like 13 points, something like that. He um he could pull – he can run the floor, lead the break. We hadn't seen that. Right. But Melo <laughs> – Melo was the first player I saw as a freshman. I got one more too, but we'll bring up the other yeah. ones. Mello, the reason why I say Mello is Mello Mello's game was like a a fourth year pro. Yeah. NBA pro. Yeah. He Mello could, could post. Hit the three. He could shoot the three. <laughs> he could face you up, take you to the whole mid range. Get the rebound and go back up hard again. Yeah, <laughs> his, his footwork was crazy. Yeah. Like you he didn't play like a freshman. Yeah. Like with A D a baller, but I mean, he's a freshman. Yeah. You know, Carmelo um, looked like he was in the NBA. Kevin, right. du- Kevin Durant, the stuff he could do was like, and that's another yeah. one, like you said. Yeah. But he was a freshman. Yeah. The way Melo was playing, he didn't look like a freshman. Like Melo looked better than NBA pros, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, and, and for the for the youngsters, man, don't don't let this this Melo that y'all seeing or have seen over the last two or three years, don't let that be the lasting image of Melo. Right. Because Melo was way more than that. And if y'all want to, I know people are saying that y'all call in real quick, 404-603-8770. Just quickly, y'all call in, just say who you thought it was. I, I got to uh, give a long speech. Courtney in the chat says uh, Chris Webber. And, and Chris Webber's yeah, one of the guys, because Chris Webber looked like a, a grown a man. A grown man against kids. And he was the first big man. To you know, Larry Johnson could do a lot. <laughs> Larry Johnson could do a lot, but Webber was the first big man we saw lead a break. You know, run it and away, run, 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 yeah, run the break, run the break, <laughs> passing the ball, yeah. dominant. Had that mean mug. You yeah, know, everybody loved Fab Five. Right, and like I said, uh, somebody said Mel, uh, Durant also. Like I said, Durant. We just never we never seen somebody that tall who was that skillful. They call him a slim reaper, <laughs> yeah. you know. But uh, there, I, just another one. In uh, if anyone, if uh, well, still call in. Uh, but another one that another great freshman I saw. I thought he was going to be great in the NBA because I thought he was better than Carmelo. That was Michael Beasley. Yeah, he was. He was. His he scoring, led the nation and rebounded. And his scoring was ridiculous. Like, he could do it from anywhere on the court. And right. I thought that the Bulls was going to make that mistake. Right. Now, <laughs> the only person, the reason why I didn't pick this guy, because like I said, Melo 
games, the eye test, like I just his game looked like a pro. He could do everything, not just the stats, but his, yeah. he had no limit to his yeah. game. Yeah. But the person that comes next that I remember was Chris Jackson. Yeah. My mood. For that dude to average 30, 30 points a, a game. Freshman? And he was killing him. I'm talking, I just never seen anybody, man, just pull up like he was doing. For those of y'all that don't know who Chris Jackson is, that would be the one, Mahmoud abdul Rauf. Still shouts out to him because he right. still dropped 50 on you today. Right. <laughs> I mean, this dude, he was, like, relentless, man. Like, the way he was shooting. And back then, yeah, people don't know that he was in a dunk contest in the NBA. Yes, so, uh, as, as a freshman, he was, he was dunking. Dunking. Yes. Yes. There's a game that um, – uh, I th- yeah, he was a freshman where they played – LSU played Florida. And I see that game come up on ESPN Classic every All now the and then. I think he scored like 55. <sighs> and, like, I thought he was a junior or senior or something. Yeah, he, that. Freshman. he only played Dropping two years him. at LSU. Yeah, Dropping him. Second year was with Shaq. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, like I said, to see him play, man, it was just like – I thought he was going to be like – the next best player ever. Like to see him, it was like, man, I couldn't believe it. Like this dude is a freshman. D Rose had a good freshman. Oh yeah, year. D Rose um, bought out just too. Just his impact on the game. Because right? both of them, like, Beasley and D Rose, D Rose, yeah. like like even in the championship game, right, or throughout the tournament, just like his impact on the game, his quickness, the way he pushed the ball, the way he did that, the way he did this. What was uh, Chris Douglas Roberts? Wasn't that his his, his his two guard? Yeah, yeah, they was out there balling, man. Now this freshman. This freshman I have, I thought uh, Iverson was like he wasn't. When I saw Iverson, it, oh. I just no no forget Iverson. Iverson was a beast, but I'm gonna let the, I'm gonna let the call it because I might take the answer. Who do we have calling in? Yeah, this is Ab. What's up, Mister Controversy? What's up, Ab? Who do what you up, have? Mister D or Mister G? What's going on? What up, what up though, man? man? All right, listen. Not only do I have the best freshman ever, but how about a freshman tandem? How how do we forget Greg Oden and Michael Conley in uh, high in college? They made it to the national title game. Obviously, they didn't win it. But you couldn't stop Greg Oden. He was everything as advertised before he got injured. And he had his little buddy, Mike Conley, he went to high school with. Both players made it to the national title game. Both players went to the NBA. You couldn't stop that tandem. Freshman tandem, Mike Conley, Greg Oden. Fellas, later. Appreciate that. Appreciate ah, that. that's that, true. That, that was a good one. Yeah. Odin, once he had that ball in the park, not even have to have it. Like, once he got it that, down, it was over with. Remember he broke his hand and he was or did something, fractured his hand, he was shooting with his yeah. left? Yeah, yeah. And, and who would have thought, right, like, we didn't think that Conley was going to have a longer career than Odin. You know what I mean? Like, right. it, it was like Odin was the man. You know, Conley was kind of like his tag team. Yeah. Mate, you know what I mean? And look yeah. at what Conley has it's done. I uh, wanted to give y'all some some other. I, I was I knew like someone was going to have a list, but just I just going by like what you guys might think of their freshman year. Uh, Jaleel Okafor, great great season. He was unstoppable. Uh, another another old school one, Wayman Tisdale at Oklahoma. See, I was too I che- right. Yeah, I I was, we didn't see yeah, that. Right. I was I too, but that's why we going by. I take your saw. word for it that he was good. He averaged twenty five. Are you going to say this? Are you going? Are you? Do you have Stephon Marbury? Because Stephon Marbury. I don't have Stephon Marbury, but I do have Kenny Anderson for Georgia Tech. His season was great. He took him to the Final Four. Yeah, he did. Purvis Ellison. I didn't see it, but but I've done the research. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to go back to the two Georgia Tech Mm -hmm. guards. I just remember I was a shorty then. I was, what, like, what what was that, 90? So I was like 11. 90, yeah. I was like 11, about to turn 11. My brother was a big basketball fan, and I remember he kept talking all oh, this Kenny Anderson. And, we you know, we, this is back in Illinois, Kenny Anderson, Kenny Anderson. And I remember watching him, and his handles, I'm like. Crazy. But I still think Steph, Steph's, because that was, that was Iverson's, was that Iverson? I think that was his sophomore year. But Steph was the first person I saw come out as a freshman. Remember, Steph came out as a freshman. We was like, everybody was kind of like, should he do that? But I remember when he drove baseline and he dunked, and he dunked on somebody, like <laughs> Jordan style, like kissed the rim. <laughs> this dude ain't nothing but 6'4". Yeah. 
And you couldn't stop Steph. At all. At all. Handle was crazy. All right, man. So I don't know. Um, Jermaine Brown said Eddie Griffin. From Seton Hall? Yeah. Yeah. Eddie Griffin he had, had, yeah. He had all the talent in the world. Yeah. yeah. He yeah, really rest did. Rest in peace, too. Rest in peace. He had, that's, that's good call out, JB. He definitely did. Yeah. Eddie Griffin got out. I thought he was going to come to the oh, league he, and, and do his thing. And he just said another one. He took mine. I'm going to let I'm going to give a shine to him though. JB also said Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd. Yeah. That was yeah. a man. Yeah. Him and Sharif. Yeah, Sharif Cuz remember had both a, of yeah, them. Sharif had a crazy freshman season too. Cuz who won college player of the year that year? Or whatever. Uh, Did Jason or was it Sharif? No, no, no. no J- they didn't play together. No. They played in the same year. Jason Kishore did not play together. No. no, not play together in college. They were the same school. No, you, but they you're did right, not play you're together. You're right. Sharif came yeah, before him. Sharif came after, after, after him. I'm sorry. After. You're right. My bad. After, that's what I'm thinking. Because I remember Jason Kidd came out, and I was like, Kidd, because I ain't never, you know, I'm sure I knew Cali, but he put Cali on the map. Mm. And then Sharif came out after him. But Jason Kidd, though, his. his Tyler Hines, bro, had a great, great rookie freshman season. No, you know who was the. <laughs> All right, y'all, we're going to end it like this. You know who had the uh, the freshman who was overrated, but at that time we thought he was the code, the first one of the first diaper dandies ever? You remember Toby Bailey from yeah. UCLA? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> disappeared. When they won that championship, yeah. he was a freshman of that team. It was like, oh, he's going to be good. Hey, man, that Toby and it Bailey just was did this. His whole thing, and he just <laughs> stayed on the same line and then went down. You didn't mention Jay Will. Jay Will. Uh, he had a well, great He was he Jason had, Williams. He, Jason Williams. He had a, yep, Duke. He had a good. But I, I, I think what, what happened to him, his other, this next two seasons were so big where you almost forgot his yeah. freshman year. Jabari Parker had a great freshman year. Average almost twenty a game. Elton Brand was bought. Elton Brand bought out his his freshman year too. Jared Sullinger should have came out after his first year. Man, y'all bring it back memories, man. <laughs> Remember, uh, also um, on this same list, they brought up Patrick Ewing. Oh know, that's yeah, of course. But I was shorty, but when they when they when Jordan hit that shot, uh, he was a freshman. Ewing was a freshman too. Mm-hmm. Right. In that same I, I game. think it's something that we're forgetting because it's so soon and it just happened. Trey Young. Trey Young, yeah. First player to lead the nation in assists Assist and, and scoring. scoring in the same season. And as a freshman, <laughs> you know, hey, some big names up there, man. Some yeah, big it's, names, some, man. it's some big names, man. Um, but like I said, man, it's, it's just cool. Corey McGetty, Damian mentioned, I was about to say him. I remember Corey from the crib. Um, you know Corey from the crib, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, Corey. Uh, would. Yeah. JB used to play with him. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Um, oh, JV, oh, yeah, he grew up. With he used to kill you, JB. <laughs> no, but, JV uh, had game. JV, yeah, I was best <laughs> with Jay. But no, nah, but Corey, I remember him being a freshman. But like I said, it's so many that you can name that their freshman seasons. Like it was like, oh, this dude is the truth. You know, um, I just remember Shaq was just the biggest. Like, oh, this guy's gonna be good next year. You know, but. Again, to me, I know G said eighty. Me and me and D both agreed on Melo. Like I said, Melo was just this game was just. You know how what they say when a kid like his game was too mature. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's mature. why when he got to the league, there was no drop off. Nope, none, none, no drop off. Yep. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We will be right back. Have a sports injury? Need to see an orthopedic doctor? Ortho Atlanta is one of Metro Atlanta's largest orthopedic and sports medicine practices, providing orthopedic and sports medicine care for the whole family. With 37 physicians and 14 offices, the practice provides the highest level of care for injury of muscles, joints, bones, and spine. Ortho Atlanta offers convenient access to a full range of musculoskeletal surgeons and specialists. Ortho Atlanta also offers on-site physical therapy, pain management care, MRI imaging, and workers' compensation care. The Ortho Atlanta Surgery Centers in Austell and Fayetteville provide cost-effective, same-day surgical procedures in an accredited outpatient center. 
hip, knee, shoulder, back pain? Ortho Atlanta has you covered with specialists in all areas. Same day appointments, orthopedic care for the whole family. Ortho Atlanta, Atlanta's choice for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Learn more at www.orthoatlanta.com. Hi, this is Aditi Kinkabala with the NFL Network, and you are listening to the Three Point Conversion. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Yo, I want to give a quick shout out to, um, you know, we was talking to JB and um, JB played against Corey Maggette. You know, this, uh, he probably used to school his older brother too, uh, Randy Brown. That's his, he's played for the Bulls. Shout out JB, man. Shout I out went JB. To high school with him. He always was like a big brother, man. Good right. looking, big bro. Straight from the crib. So, um, all right. So we got somebody else who is probably not at the crib. He is probably popping a uh, an ankle back in or doing brain surgery or something. <laughs> My man, Dr. Donnie Fowler, the third orthopedic for Ortho Atlanta. What's going on, sir? What's up, guys? How's it going? All right, all right. Good, man. Excited about this tournament. Oh yeah, I, it's, uh, I mean, this is probably my favorite three weeks of the of the year, especially being a Duke guy, as you guys well know. So uh, hopefully it'll end well for us. We'll see. So let's be honest. We're gonna ask you: Were you sweating the first half? Nah. That Duke? <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't sweating. I mean, uh, certainly got a bunch of freshmen first NCAA tournament game. I expected them to maybe be a little tight. Um, honestly, I. I think they they kind of figured it out. Looked pretty good the second half. Uh, certainly, were teams that made me even more nervous than than they did. Looking at someone like UVA, who was down six at halftime to a 16 seed after being bounced last year, I figured if they ended up losing two years in a row as a one seed to a 16. They should probably get the death penalty for the program and not not be invited back to the tournament. But you you right. Look, and I was going to mess with you when Duke was trailing. I was going to text you, like, just text you Virginia last year, just to score to Virginia. Uh, <laughs> I was yeah, I probably would have retired at that point if, if Duke had lost. But. <laughs> oh, man. So, look, we're going to get into it. We're going to stick with, with the uh, college basketball and the March Madness. So, Kentucky Wildcats for PJ, uh, PJ Washington – has been in a walking boot, and now he's in a cast. Like, wow. When in a cast, if he's wearing a cast now, what does that mean, and how much longer do you expect him to be out? Yeah, I mean, that's a really big deal uh, as far as, you know, going from a boot to a cast. I mean, a boot is somewhat standard for some of the modern stuff. It's something you can take off so you can do ice and motion and, and treatment and all that kind of thing. So it's not uncommon with a little subtle type thing, even if it's minor, to get in a boot pretty quickly just to help with swelling and things like that. But when you go to a cast, which is obviously something you can't take off, there's usually a reason you're doing it, and it's because the injury is more severe. You don't want, in this case, the foot um, moving at all, and you're just completely shutting them down. So that, to me, even though they're just calling it a foot sprain, um, tells me it's a probably a lot more serious, and I think Cal Perry has indicated that he's not going to play against against Walford, but it, I, I'm not sure if if he'll be then, assuming that they win, which I, I think they will, uh, if he'll be ready for you know next weekend for the Sweet 16. Did, did you think they just – you think they just uh, misdiagnosed it or whatever, if I'm saying it correctly? Like, was it a wrong – uh, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, maybe, or maybe they didn't, I don't know if I'd say misdiagnosed or maybe didn't know how severe it was until they kind of sent him to a specialist because they initially had it worked up and put him in a boot and then he went and saw a specialist and then suddenly he was in a cast. So I think they probably just got more information um, that kind of they said, well, let's uh, let's be a little more aggressive with 
shutting this down in hopes of, you know, accelerating the process of letting it, letting the swelling go down, letting, I guess, whatever ligament he sprained try to heal up quicker so they can try to get him back by the end of the tournament. Uh, Doc, the Milwaukee Bucks uh, for Nikola Meritic is out with a sprained thumb. Now, does he have to be 100% to come back and play, and how long do you expect him to be out? Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely been a, a big part for that uh, Milwaukee team. Uh, they're saying most things are quoting somewhere between two and four weeks. Some of the reports are kind of talking, like you said, the sprain. There's also, uh, they're, they're mentioning a small fracture. My guess is they're just talking about an, an avulsion-type fracture where you kind of stretch out the ligament and it pulls out a little fleck of bone, not like a you know break going all the way across the bone, anything more severe. So, I'd probably put him in that two to three week range, but certainly I think they're going to make sure that he's um, healthy. And and obviously, I don't expect him back until until the playoffs at this point for them. So, will he make it? Will he make it in the beginning of the playoffs, or would he be like the second round? I, I think he might be able to make it in the beginning of the playoffs. Were there eight or nine games left in in the season? So I, I think um, you know that's going to be right around that. To kind of two and a half, three week mark when the playoffs actually start. So I, I think he will probably um, kind of be back somewhat in that first series. I don't know about Brogdon, the other guy that's been out too with his plantar fascia. They got a couple guys down, so obviously they they need to be full strength. So because I was going to ask you, if if not, would you expect him, or would you, I guess, encourage him to? Do like Ronnie Lott and cut off his thumb for the team. Like, <laughs> cut off his pinky. I don't. I, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think basketball players are as tough as uh, football players. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that Ronnie Lott thing was crazy he back cut, in the day. He cut that out. He gonna be off. He gonna, yeah, he be, out cut, just, he gonna be out longer than just two. Cut the thumb, just cut, cut the thumb <laughs> off like Ronnie Lott, like he did his pinky, and just let him. You know. But um, so we know you into sports. We know you know sports. So, um, just stand with this Milwaukee team. If he doesn't play, how do you think Milwaukee could get past the first round this time? Or do you think it's that would be like how? Because he's a big factor. Like how big yeah. a factor do you believe he is? No, I think I think honestly they have enough talent uh, with Giannis, of course, and, and everyone else that the the, the Seven, I, they're not going to fall lower than a two seed. I think Toronto's three games back. So even if they stumbled a little bit and get the two seed, the the bottom seven eight of the Eastern Conference is pretty pretty underwhelming, under five hundred ball clubs. So I, I I think they won't have a problem in the first round, but certainly uh, I think they'll need him for the, the second round, depending on how things uh, shake up, depending on who's who's sitting there with with Boston, Philadelphia, some of those teams. So uh, I think they'll definitely need them by then. So, All right. So um, me and D was talking, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we talk about, the, um, or we all were talking, we're talking about the Duke, you know, Zion Cam. Uh, first, how do you feel about that? I, so I was somewhere where where I wasn't able to watch it. So I've only kind of heard about it. They just had the regular feed on where I was at. I mean, I, I get it from a entertainment standpoint. There's a lot of people that just kind of want to kind of see Zion and watch how he moves because of how much he actually does, even without the ball, that people don't realize. So, so in a way, I think it's it's a kind of a, a cool concept and and fun. I think. If it's the wrong kind of person who's not ready to handle that, it could be a problem. But I think Zion has been obviously out his face out there in the media, social media, everything. He's he's bigger than pretty much anyone I think anyone can remember, at least at the college level in sports. I don't think it's gonna it affects him or his psyche knowing that there's like a camera following him twenty four seven while while he's out there. So all right, so and you so you know, Doctor Vala said he think it's cool. So what I'm gonna do is I wish we had like balloons or something because this is gonna be the first time, man. You you just the first time it's gonna happen to you, Doc Doc uh, Donnie. You know this is a great moment. Cherish this. Stop it. 
Can we give him a stop it? Get that stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Doctor, you see, you're talking like a Dookie <laughs> fan. Dookie, that's exactly Come on, what man. Was. You know that's a horrible idea to have a camera. We don't want to see him. <laughs> hey, some of us some of us just want to watch Zion. So. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but speaking of that, I asked that question because we were talking. I know this is like off the dome. Like, you, you know, you know, we haven't given you time, but we, we talked about the best freshmen college freshman basketball players, you know, in their freshman year you've ever seen. Like, not necessarily going by stats, but you watch with your own eyes, you say, man, is there a freshman, if you could think of someone that stuck out that you say was the best freshman you ever saw besides Zion, if it's Zion? I mean, I, I think I'd, I'd probably go back to, like, Shaquille O'Neal time frame at LSU. Uh, I, I think – yeah, I mean, you can go to some of those guys at Michigan, obviously, mm-hmm. but I almost think about them more collectively as, right. as a unit. I think Weber obviously stood out more than anyone, at least at the college level. But but just thinking of, like, one person that the world hadn't really seen at that level, I'd probably go back to Shaq at, at LSU. So. All right. Yeah, we mentioned him as well. All right. So there you have it, my friend, my man, Mr. – I'm sorry, Dr. – Duke Blue Devil himself, Donnie <laughs> Fowler the third. He's the orthopedic for Ortho Atlanta. Man, we appreciate you for coming on, man. Uh, make sure you go back and save a life like you always do. And uh, next week, same time. Can't wait. All right, guys. See you next week and have a great one. No problem. Thank you. Dr. Fowler got his first stop it. He's in the family now. <laughs> He's family. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. (laughs) We'll be right back. You got to stop it. (laughs) I'm Maurice Jones Drew of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the NFL Network, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion. The Three Point Conversion. Have you been looking for a radio station that gives you sports? I don't believe it. Oh, it's a touchdown. Entertainment. Are you not entertained? And other special interest talk shows. Well, isn't that special? All on one app. Yeah, that's dope. What app is that? It's the real 1100 AM app for WWE. Grab it for free in your Google Play or Apple App Store today. What's good, family? I'm Marlon Sucker Free Jones, a Sucker Free Life Double LC, and I'm locked in every Saturday to the best sports show on the planet, the Three Point Conversion, with no team or no players off limits. So let's talk sports, the best of the best, the worst of the worst, and everything in between. Can you dig that? It's time to get in the mind of Mr. Controversy and the intellectual with what's on my mind. Right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Before we get to what's on our mind, uh, baseball is about to come on. <clears throat> it's about to start the season. It's about to start. And quickly uh, predicting the Brave season. You know what? No, we're going to do it now because they're going to start before next weekend. <laughs> Who? What um. do you they're not necessarily a record because they play right, right a thousand games. Yeah, so yeah. but we want to know like just. Um, I, I see them building on last year and definitely going back to the playoffs. What happens with Kimbrel? Has he signed somewhere yet? Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. I think the Brewers were talking to him. Oh, I saw the Red Sox and the Braves are like the last two. Standing. Like if 
if they get him, do you would that put them put them at a competitive stance? Definitely. Isn't one of the starters out to start the season though? Yeah. Fuck. What's the name, G? <laughs> Fotinov which something like hey, they just I call him Fulty. Fulty. Yeah, I call him <laughs> Fulty, but I you know, but uh yeah. But Fulty um uh, He's going to be out to start the season. Uh, I don't know, man. They need Kimbrough. They they need yeah, him. They get him. That'll, they need. That'll that's the what they're missing. Pitching. The game. I still think they shot people, and they still finished number one. Yeah. I think they finished number one. Yeah. And then we got to talk about this elephant in the room. So, um, shoot, forget elephant. We talk elephant. about this whale it's, in the room. It, what's bigger than that? What's bigger than a whale? I guess whale is the biggest. Probably nothing. That's it, right? Yeah. yeah. Talk about that whale. So $430 million whale. It's weigh $430 million. <laughs> That's what it weighs. Does it mess up baseball? No. No, I, I don't think it does. Uh, you saw what Bryce's deal was. Um, Mike Trout's war every year is over 10. Mm-hmm. It's just ridiculous. But I, I'm surprised that he signed it though. My, my yeah, me too. Well, no, I'm not. I am, but I'm not. I'm surprised he stayed with Los Angeles. Yeah, That's what but, I'm surprised bro, about. What can you do with all that money in your face? Somebody else would have gave him four thirty. Nah, I don't think no one was giving him four thirty. What you think, G? I don't think no one was giving him four thirty. May, maybe four hundred, but maybe not three eighty. Maybe three eighty, but I don't think four thirty. Yeah, he was getting four hundred. Yeah, I think he set the he set the uh, the line for what players can get going yeah. forward. But see, this is why, and I know there's no cap really in, in baseball, but this is the thing. Who else you going to sign? Who, Los Angeles? Yeah, like, do you want to, I might get, I was talk, talking about my son, I might ask see if he want to play. He might get a 500000 <laughs> now because. Apparently the the Angels have this have this great farm system now. And so they'll just bring up those players. They're going to have to. You can't sign anybody else. They make good money, though. They bring a lot of money in. I don't know if it's that Dodger money, though. It's not. It's not. 430 mil. And think about this. That's what, four, what are you making a year? But like you said, like like you said do you think, 30, do you think this will create a cap? Because then you look at it like this. Let me, let me say, this is why I say this. Because... Shoot, when they take taking away onside kicks, you never know in sports. But I'm saying this because of the fact that it becomes not fair to other teams when mm-hmm. they can't pay this guy this or they can't pay. Because right now, if he's if it's 430, which he should get. I mean, as far as being the best player, you should have the top record. I mean, you but got top. I mean, top uh, salary. The, but look, right, right. but you got people like. You still gonna have to pay Mookie. You still, I mean, you got he just all these declined players. Two hundred too. Yeah, he, he did. Said, he said he don't want. He do not want to talk until twenty twenty. Right. He's smart. <laughs> but my point is now it's gonna raise the salaries, raise the deals, the pay, and you got teams like a Houston Astros or a Tampa Bay Rays or whatever they call. Don't now. say Houston because they just gave Bergman a hundred, didn't they? A uh, hundred over six. So if you put twelve, that's two hundred. Is he even? Worth- he ain't Mike Trout. I mean, right. but no. But what I'm saying <laughs> right. is, but what I'm saying is, they ain't gonna have to pay out two very soon. Now, yeah. right? What you think he gonna ask he gonna, for? He, he, wh- they ain't gonna have enough. Two hundred? No, he asked for more than two. He worked more than two hundred. If you if you going by what everybody's getting, he I would take you him. Think, over. You think he Bryce Harper money? Yes, I would take. What has Bryce Bryce Harper done? But three hundred and twenty strikeouts and thirty. I, I think there's the gonna seats. be <laughs> he fill up the seats. Well, like oh, Tuve does it. There won't be. He won't. He's in Houston. That's what I'm saying. So if he goes somewhere else, he's filling seats. He's like the fifth he, he top five. I'm not saying he's not good. So if he's getting three hundred, he shouldn't. He should get more than two hundred. Well, right. I don't think he's going to get like uh, not as many years. Like Harper's right. is thirteen years. Trout is twelve. Altuve will get like five or six, and, and it's going to be for a lot. But it'll be, he might yeah, make thirty a, a year, bit. but it's going to be short. It might be like five for one fifty. Yeah, he probably gonna, if somebody say 
Hey, Altuve, we can pay you. Know you know how I feel about small market teams? Get your weight up. But you can't like, say unfortunately, that. Unfortunately. You can't say that, though. Well, you got, but you, on the you other hand, to be able on to the other hand so, small teams may, so small market teams may feel like their way works. Look at the Tampa Bay Rays, what? who have spent a billion dollars in payroll through the entirety of their franchise. That's 20 years. So, so here's yeah. another thing, and it's the point I was talking in a message, right? You don't really win with free agents. Think about teams that spent all the money on free agents. They don't win. You win by building up your farm system, grabbing a high price free agent, and making a couple trades. But if very few if, teams do that. Yeah, right. but if Boston did it. The Yankees do it look, all the time. But if your farm and system, much, the and Yankees, they win. But think about the Yankees. When the last time they won a, a, a World Series championship? But look, but Boston, but <laughs> hey, but you mentioned Boston. They gotta pay their they gotta pay the people that's coming up in the farm farm system now. Cause look what Mookie's doing. <laughs> you gotta pay Mookie. Yeah. But my point is But you got a good six years before you even gotta pay him. So basically you saying we're gonna get you six years and after that we holler. If if we can afford you and keep you there, hopefully we've made money over those four to six years. If you've won us a world championship, if you've done this, that's more money coming in. But I, I don't I mean, I'm sorry. So and what I mean by I don't feel bad that Pittsburgh Pirates can't sign Bryce Harper. That's because they need a division. No. Because <laughs> you were the coach. All right, man. This segment, this segment is called What's On Our Mind. And we just spoke a lot of what's on our mind. But um, this is brought to you by Sucker Free Life LLC. Make sure you live your truth for the world to see because everyone can be sucker free. Make sure you purchase your apparel today on Facebook.com forward slash Sucker Free Life LLC. This is where we like to get stuff off our chest. What are we thinking? What's going on? This is straight from the dome. I had I was going to talk about something else, but um, hey, might as well <laughs> roll with this now. <laughs> so bear with me, but I'm gonna make it quick. Talk about the NCAA tournament. We love the tournament. We love the upsets. <clears throat> I spoke about this before, as far as people watching the games for upsets which is cool but and I understand if you're a casual fan or you're not a fan at all but watch it for the play man you're seeing some great games some great play like what makes Liberty win, Liberty's win great is not the fact that they knocked off Mississippi State but the passion they play with, the energy they play with, we all know they're not getting paid, but the passion that they play with, like, and not just the 12th seed, the 13th seed, even the number one seeds, the emotion you see when they win or they lose. And we just talked about Trout's paycheck, we talk about the NBA guaranteed, the NFL, they're playing because it's not guaranteed, so they're trying to get their money. But you see these players, like this tournament, everybody wants to leave and go to the NBA to make money or go overseas to make money. But during the tournament, all of that goes out the window. You can tell, you, you see the emotion, enjoy it. You know, like I said, just don't look at it for upsets. I mean, you can root for the up. The underdog, that's great. But really enjoy it, man, because NBA, great basketball. But I guarantee you won't see basketball in its purity like you will during this time. You know, see the no-name players get up you know, play well, whether they on a great team or not. To see um, the coaches and how they're going at it. The fans, like... The three-point conversion got to cover the Sweet 16 last year in the Elite Eight. And I will never forget, it just felt like, I mean, to hear the fans behind me so into the game. And these are grown men, <laughs> like 50 years old. Then you had the kids. So I just say, enjoy it. Enjoy it. That's all I got to say. Just enjoy it, man. It's... it's this is great basketball, and this is this is what sports is all about. And that's what's on my mind. Yeah, definitely, man. You can't like March Madness is something you can never 
not watch. You know what I mean? Like, it's the energy of seeing these kids go out there and do their thing. So I definitely agree with you. Um, so it's on my mind. It's not even sports related. Unfortunately, it's going to be one of the times that I go a different way. <clears throat> um, so yesterday was my last day at my job, my other job. Um, and it's been 12 and a half years uh, across two cities, two states. Uh, met a lot of people. Um, some people are, uh, have became some of my best friends and some have even became family. Um, I'm able to be on this show today because of that other job. Um, meeting up with Mr. Controversy and realizing we both from Chicago and then just that bond that we got was able to create what we got going on right now. Um, I just want to say, you know, thank you. Um, that other job, <laughs> you know, I don't want to, <laughs> you know, put put it on blast or whatever. But those that know me know what it is or whatever, so I don't really have to go deep into it. Um, I just want to say thank you for all the friends that I've met, the family that I've met, uh, and all the the information that I was able to achieve and learn about corporate America and growing into the man that I am today, and I wouldn't have been able to do it without without that other position. And um, it's bittersweet, but now it's on the bigger and better things, and that's just what's on my mind today. <laughs> <laughs> he doing that because he, he got to go there for my day. The, I'm gonna tell you, though, but for real, quickly, it's good that you say that. I'm horrible because if it, me. <laughs> <laughs> F y'all. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just playing. Yeah. But no, and it's funny, real quick, the last story. 30 seconds. First time I met D, um, was talking, and um, he was sitting down, and I just asked him, like, yo, you into sports? He's like, yeah, yeah. We started talking, and finally he's from the shop. Oh, you know, so we, of course, we start bonding in. Oh, that's what's up, whatever, you know. What about Italian beefs and all that crap? So anyway, we started talking, and asked him, yeah, I'm into sports. I, you know, told him what I did. And this is before I even got. I think I just started my podcast. I was just starting my podcast. And he was like, um, well, that's what's up, man. He was like, I want to do something like that. So, dog, stick by my side. I promise you, I'm going to get you on. I'm going to get you on. I'll get you on the radio. I didn't know this was coming up. I didn't, but I knew something, and I promised him. And it's like, nah, I just sit here. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Mm, so, that's dope. Definitely, man. That's just what it is. Yep. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm stuck with this joker forever. <laughs> forever, ever. Now, uh, <laughs> You hear this music, you know what it means. It's time to let you go. But before we let you go, please stick by because we might have some shout outs for you. First, I want to give a shout out to Almighty God, giving me this platform, giving me this time to do what I do, say what I say. We appreciate you, God. I appreciate you, God. And um, giving me this chance to make you all mad, upset, happy, you want to give me the stop it button. But oh well, I appreciate that you do have feelings and I thank God for that. All right. Thank you, Raphael. <laughs> you give me that all the time. All right, and I want to thank uh, our sponsors, Ortho Atlanta, Solid Express, Sucker Free Life, LLC, Cindy Cuts Barbershop. I appreciate y'all, man. Couldn't do this without y'all. Also, I want to thank my engineer, G. Appreciate you, G. I want to thank, I guess, Dr. Fowler and also um, Deshaun Tates, Take Sports. And then, of course, my uh, road dog, the intellectual. You know it, man. I just want to thank friends and family, all of our uh, listeners that continue to listen and tune in to the Three Point Conversion. Continue to check us out, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, uh, our website, wherever you go, continue to do it. Uh, again, friends and family, and special shout out to the VZ Dub fam. Y'all know what it is, man. Appreciate y'all. And uh, I want to thank my family and friends, uh, all my family. Uh, friends, my daughter got a little race. I got to hurry up my head out. Uh, but um, aunties, uncles, cousins, nephews, nieces, grandparents, Grand brothers kids. and sisters. I don't have any grandchildren. <laughs> um, make sure y'all love family, man. While they are alive, love family. Let them know that you love them. Eat well. Eat good today. Watch some sports. The three-point conversion. Covering the AAF. Atlanta. Um, dang, what's that? I can't even think of my name. The Atlanta Legends are playing the Orlando Apollos. Apollos. Enjoy this weather. I got to get used to these these teams. Um, also, we're covering that. Shout out to Ab Stanley there. 
G and the Silky Voice is going to be at the Atlanta yeah. <laughs> Hawks game. I'll be there with them yeah. covering that. And um, on Sunday, shout out to Damian Adams from The Real Deal with Damian Adams on the three-point conversion. He is covering the Phoenix Headshots. Arizona Headshots. Arizona Headshots. Hot Shots. See, I don't know these. AAF headshots I, like it's a body. Hot shot, they gave yeah. you credentials, man. Come on, hey man. I, they know, man. That's why they letting everybody. But anyway, we, that's why we there. We try to get them so everybody know who they yeah. are, man. But hey, these I thought it was the Arizona rattlesnakes. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Anyway, um, till then, watch some NCAA tournament. Watch sports. Great stuff going on. Next week, same time, same show, same crazy host, same sports nonsense. Until then, when you miss me, I'm out. Peace. Peace. You just got done listening to the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook accounts at the Three Point Conversion. And also make sure you check out our website, the Three Point Conversion.com. Be sure to follow us live and listen every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern.